All right, so we're going to do data structures with uh, the Go programming language. We're going to look at slices. We're going to look at maps. We're going to look at structs. And because this is my new favorite push, uh, you're watching this video for free on YouTube. Go to Todd. Go to go to Twitter and follow me. I've got reasons for this. You'll get good stuff out of it. I'm launching something in December. I want to be able to tell you about it. Go here and follow me on Twitter. And we're using this repo. Username goes to 11 and GitHub Golang Web Dev. We are in 01 prereq, right? And so data structure, slice map, struct. That's what we're learning in this video. I'm sorry if I'm going to annoy you at the beginning of every video going over that, but people find this in random order. And there's a whole playlist for all these videos that you could find by going to Todd McLeod YouTube. All right, enough preface. Now we're going to look about these data structures. First one's going to be a slice. Okay, so when you create data structures, the easiest way to create them is a composite literal. And you can go to the Golang language spec and effective Go and learn about composite literals. When you create a composite literal, you're going to do the type and you're going to do braces and you're going to put the data in between and then you're going to give it to an identifier. Okay, and so what's that look like? Uh, composite literal. All right, so first of all, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's the slice of int. There's the type, and now I'm just going to put in the values, 7, 14, 12, 42, okay? And then funt print line x. And by the way, if you're somewhere in the world watching these videos and you do not have Go set up, you could go to Golang, you could go to Udemy, Udemy, Todd McLeod, take my introduction to Go programming language, and, uh, and you could also, you know, and that'll show you how to set up your system. You could also go straight to the Golang Playground, and you could enter this code at the Golang Playground, right? And then make sure imports is checked, hit format, run it, and there's my list, my slice of values. This is a composite literal. I have the type, curly braces, values. Cool. That's a slice. <clears throat> I can then click share. I could grab that URL and that's forever. I could send that to somebody. You could always get back to this code. Okay? So that's just like, hey, cool. And then that's a slice. That's great. Here's a y equals, and we have a map. Maps have a key and a value. I don't know. And then I have my composite literal. So I'm going to instantiate that with my key and value, a string and an int. Todd, 45, time goes quickly. Max, 40, there we go. I could also do this. I said from this map, which has a key of Todd, give me that value and print it. And it figures out, oh, I'm printing it, I'm printing a string. You can make this key any type, you can make that value any type. <clears throat> if I want to store struct as a value, can I use that? Yep. Oh. Yeah, it's a type. Oh. Any type. Struct's a type. Now structs, there's a way to do a composite literal with a struct. And you could say struct. And the fields are going to be f name, string, l name, string. And then the values will be kind of like an object. Oh, 
My editor doesn't like some of that. I'll let you put that in your pipe and smoke it for a minute. Anybody have questions about that? Let me show you one more thing and then you could code some stuff up. I don't really like this structure right here. To me, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's kind of like not super clear. I much prefer, I'm going to close this one. That's 0, 2, all right, closing that one. I'm going to copy that folder. I'll bring it down so you can see it. I'm going to copy that folder so you have a record of it. I'm going to make it 0, 3, close all these. And so I much prefer this type person struct has these fields and now type person z is a value of type person right and the fields have those values I do not have to put in the keys when I populate all the fields and I do it in order you can also put in a key here, F name colon, L name colon. And then if I do keys, I could just do some of the fields, and I could do them in any order I want, right? But, and just because the proof is in the pudding, talk all day about cooking, but until you show me what your pudding tastes like. All right? I could do it like that, and it's always good to check that because you get a little sleep deprived and then you start live coding. And live coding, you know, is different than when you're at your desk. Because <laughs> when you're at your desk, you could be like, uh, 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 okay, cool. And you don't think twice about it. You're in front of an audience, you go, uh, uh, and people go, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. And we'll get to that point. Because everybody knows, has a threshold of what they know. Z is colon equal person, right? I could do it that way and that works. I like that way better. So I created type person struct. And then I use Z, it's type person. Composite literal, type person, right? And, uh, and then I gave it the curly braces and the values. That's a composite literal. Gave it the type the curly braces and the values. The type, the curly braces, the values. The type, the curly braces, the values. Composite literal. You'll hear, 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 hear people say a slice literal, a map literal, a person or a struct literal. It's a composite literal, all right? This is composition. Composition is its own deal, programming composition wiki, right? Which Go draws upon. Composition over inheritance, OOP, polymorphic, interfaces, right? This is all Go. We are composing programs. Bill Kennedy has a nice article on composition, composition with Go. Nice to read. Good to check out. So uh, a composite literal. Composite, composite data type, different data types brought together, right, or different values brought together. So I want you to, uh, oops, this one isn't current. This is the current one. I want you to... Uh, yeah, yeah. If I remove the comma 
Yeah. Yeah, if you remove, you have to have the trailing comma when you do it on multiple lines. Have to have that trailing comma. When you do it on one line, you do not. See, error, no error. Do it on one line. So that's a little bit of an oddity. And there's a reason for it. We don't need to know the reason, right? Just like you use English every day and you don't have to know object, verb, subject, verb, you know, adverb. You don't have to, you, you can use it pretty well. Sometimes you get things wrong and say braggadocious. But, you know, close enough. But no, with Go, you have to make sure everything compiles. And so multiple lines, you got to do like that. If I put all these on multiple lines, you know, if I wanted to do that, I would have to do this. What is it? Yeah. 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 Or if you're going to add a value in, don't forget the comma, which is a common, common thing people do. So it's a nice check. With the comma? Uh, like, you know how you have the top one, Todd, yeah. the next one? Okay, let us know. No problem. So let's just make it a rule. Always put the comma on. Good question or good comment, good observation. Because it looks like an array from, <laughs> from other languages or whatever. Yeah. Cool. But unlike an array, which often you have to have the same type, I don't know what languages you're working in, I could also come up here and have different types. You know it. All right, so I'm going to give you a second to code that up and play, create something of each of those types, so I could take a break. Can you just comment on uh, mini software, Go with Java and Python? Is, it or is, it is better. What else do you need to know? Yeah, it's, it's compiled. Oh, yeah, no, no, it doesn't, doesn't have bytecode. Like it's going straight to binary zeros and ones, compiled for the architecture of the operating system. I could be on my Mac and I could compile for Windows and create an EXE, but it, it's its own executable, it's binary, there's no runtime environment, it's super fast. That's what Go is awesome for. It's the fastest, it is the fastest solution for web server-side programming in the world today. Unless you get super esoteric and build it in C. <laughs> right? But Node.js doesn't touch it. Python doesn't touch it. Ruby sure as hell doesn't touch it. And PHP, like, isn't even in the major leagues. Like, PHP is like rookie sand park baseball compared to major league ball. So compiled straight, straight down to zeros and one, which makes it quick. Like we're running on App Engine. App Engine on Google Cloud was built originally for Python. They have configuration variables that you know will run eight requests on one machine, then you get a new machine because Python's got it can't handle threads. Python ultimately is a single thread, right? And uh, and um, and so we're like, well, hell, we're doing all this on Go. We could crank that up. All right, good question. So uh, take a moment, just create each of those. <laughs> 